Uh, okay, guys, for this review, let's just try to be a little mature, okay? We're just gonna plow right through this video. I messed up. You got me, guys. You definitely got me. Reviewing Dead or Alive, haha. <laughs> Usually people fall into two camps on this game. It's an insult to the fighting game genre, or what the hell's a fighting game? Well, I can safely say I fall into neither of these camps. Dead or Alive specializes in a specific set of skills, and I think we all know what they are. The in-depth and surprisingly complex fighting system that blends simplicity and advanced techniques to create Actually, I'm just fucking with you. It's boobs. But that's not a bad thing, because think about it. I am a teenager. I want to have sex. And this game provides me with visual pleasure in eye candy. Dead or Alive never began with any shred of innocence. Ever since the first entry, this series has been going strong for one sole reason, and it has exploited this reason to the maximum. With games like Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball, you gotta adjust your expectations accordingly. Anyway, let's dive in with the latest entry in the series, Dead or Alive 5. Dead or Alive 5 was released on September 25th, 2012 on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. It was later released on the Vita in 2013 as Dead or Alive 5 Plus, and was later ported in 2015 to the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC as Dead or Alive 5 Last Round. I'll be looking at the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Vita versions of the game. There is a story in Dead or Alive 5. The story is... The, the story is... The story is... Okay, I just need to calm down here. There's probably plenty of story to go around, right? No, there's not. This is the most inconsistent, incomprehensible plot I've had the displeasure of sitting through in a fighting game. And I know, there's like five fighting games with story modes, but Jesus Christ, this is unreal. Mortal Kombat X had an awful story, but at least it was a story. This is just incoherent snippets of people's vacations in exotic locations going awry due to a goddamn attack from some random ninja. Literally, I punched a girl off a roof and suddenly I'm in Antarctica. Why? I don't know, because this guy's here. The story is also told in some out of order style, adding to the confusion. I don't know what's going on other than a dead or alive tournament is happening. Literally, each scene is some characters talking, blah blah, let me show you my power, blah, and you fight. Not only does it not make any sense, but it just isn't any fun. Look, I understand the story isn't exactly the focus of Dead or Alive, but it's not like the past games were absolute trash in terms of plot. There were some very stupid things, but I don't think to the extent of this... Who are our cast of fighters in DOA 5? We have Kas... wait a minute... Oh man... Uh, let me just paraphrase here... Hot, hot guy, hot, hot, hot guy, hot guy, Bruce Lee clone, Zack, hot guy, hot guy? Hot, hot, Akira from Virtua Fighter, okay, why is he here? Sarah from Virtua Fighter, okay... Uh, hot, 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 probably hot, guy, Kano, not into that, hot, Old guy, Pi from Virtua Fighter, okay, Jackie, okay, what is with all these Virtua Fighter characters? Guy, hot, guy, underage. Dead or Alive is a fighting game, right? Let's discuss that. DOA is kind of a weird one after coming off of four back-to-back -back 2D fighters. This is a six-button fighter, if you count throw. So your face buttons are punch, kick, block, and throw. R1 is your power blow, which is like a charge-up attack. The triggers are heavy kick and heavy punch, and L1 is your taunt. You can also move in a Z-axis, because this is a 3D fighting game. It's pretty simple when you think about it, but I had to do a bit of adjusting since Square isn't an attack. The game also incorporates the analog stick into combat, so you duck to do lows or twist the analog stick to do different types of throws, like the famous Izuna drop. 
You know what? I have to admit that Dead or Alive does not have bad fighting mechanics. It's pretty simple when you first look at it, but it can get kind of difficult with all the analog stick rotations and such. Although there is one major issue I have with the combat. The hit stun in this game is really bad. There is something called a critical stun, and apparently what causes it is certain attacks connecting with your opponent. When you are stunned, you cannot punch, kick, or even move. All you can do is mash buttons in a panic. The problem is that getting a critical stun isn't very hard to do, so majority of the match is comprised of you or your opponent in a dazed state while you just wail on them with a hoo-ha. It's just frustrating when it happens to you, and unfulfilling when it happens to your opponent. The game is actually jam-packed with modes. There's story mode, arcade mode, training mode with a full tutorial, combo challenges, survival mode, online mode, tag team challenges which is 2v2, spectator mode if you know what I mean. There's just a lot of content here. The game definitely has plenty to offer. Graphics of this game <laughs> are good. Actually though they aren't bad. Character models are detailed and throughout the fight take damage and sweat. At the end of the match, you can zoom in on your fighter, and aside from masturbation, I can honestly say this looks very good. The environments, however, aren't too great. They're pretty low res in comparison to the models, but usually you're not focusing on them. The PlayStation 4 and Xbox One versions are pretty much identical. I noticed no difference between the versions visual-wise. And if you couldn't tell, the game also has, uh, very exaggerated physics. In the options, you can toggle the breast physics, but I put them on max because it's hilarious and why not? It's what the game is known for. And this is essentially what Dead or Alive 5 is. It's just bouncing boobs and fan service. So, uh, this is where the budget went. Oh. No. Oh. Wait a minute. No. Oh. Exclusive to the uh PS3 and PS4 versions is uh this. I love you, Team Ninja. You know me so well. Music uh, I I I I I was listening, I think. Uh, yeah, it's it's good, I guess. Uh yeah. The PlayStation Vita version is pretty good actually. I'm surprised how well the visuals held up on the port. The gameplay is pretty much exactly the same, everything is exactly the same, it's all here in this version. Exclusive though is the touch to fight mode so you can touch the girls, because of course there is. <sighs> you know, I don't hate Dead or Alive 5. The fighting mechanics are decent, the graphics are nice, the boobs jiggle, but on the other hand, it's just dumb. It's just a really dumb game, and it knows it. It's self-aware at this point, with hundreds of dollars in bikini DLC, it knows how stupid it is. It's the equivalent of a big-budget Michael Bay movie, only with 90% less explosions. If you like DOA 5, don't be ashamed, I do a little as well, I think we all enjoyed it at least a little bit. But there are other fighting games out there that offer more than just nice girls to look at, and in comparison to those other fighters, Dead or Alive 5 is not my first choice. It's good for what it is, but... Uh, yeah. Okay, we're done with Dead or Alive, for better or worse. But there's one game that I haven't looked at yet in this marathon. It's a very popular series, a lot of people have played it, and it's a crossover of different franchises, and it's not Marvel vs. Capcom. Hmm. Next time on GFZ Reviews. Well, I guess I should be back here for this one. Yes, we're doing Super Smash Bros. Melee. Because why wouldn't we? This one might be a doozy, guys, so stay tuned for the finale of GFZ Reviews Fightathon.